11,000 people have died as a result of the devastating earthquake in Turkey and Syria, and that number is sadly rising. And I know many families here in the UK will be anxiously awaiting news. I'm sure I speak for the whole House in saying our hearts go out to each and every victim and their families, and we must do all we can to support the rescue and recovery effort. Yeah. Mr Speaker, this House is honoured to be addressed today by President Zelensky. Yeah. From the outset of the war, he has symbolised the heroism, the resolve and the bravery of his people. The Prime Minister and I joined this House together in 2015. We've lived through important moments in our domestic and international politics. But none of those experiences compares to the pain and suffering of the people of Ukraine. Yeah. Does the Prime Minister agree with me that, right across this House, it is vital that we all continue to stand together in full support of Ukraine? Yeah. Prime Minister. Well, can I first join with uh, the Honourable Member for paying our respects and thoughts to the people of Turkey and Syria? particularly those affected by the earthquake and the first responders who are doing such a valiant job. The House will be reassured to know that we are in touch with the Turkish and Syrian authorities in providing all assistance that they have required of us, including 77 search and rescue responders that arrived yesterday and have already begun work. And I spoke to the President yesterday to ensure that we are in close communication. Uh, and can I thank the Honourable Gentleman for his comments on Ukraine. It's something that not only the whole country can be proud of, but the entire House can be proud that we came together to stand by Ukraine when the moment mattered and that we will continue to stand with them united as one party and one United Kingdom. Yeah. Just for the record, he is the right honourable. Keir Starmer. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and I thank the Prime Minister for that answer, because every time Putin has been appeased, he's been back for more. Exactly. And so does the Prime Minister agree with me that across this House we must speak with one voice and say this terrible conflict must end with the defeat of Putin in Ukraine? Yeah. Mr Speaker, our objective remains to ensure a Ukrainian victory in this conflict. Vladimir Putin, Vladimir Putin's aggression cannot be seen in any way to have been successful, and that's why we have accelerated and increased our support militarily for Ukraine this year. It's a decision that I took as Prime Minister. Today we are going even further, not just having provided Challenger tanks and being one of the first countries to do so, which catalyzed the provision of tanks from other nations as well, but also today to move to start training Ukrainian Marines in the advanced capabilities they will need to mount further offensive, but also to train their pilots on advanced combat aircraft. So the House can be reassured we will continue to support Ukraine to ensure decisive military victory on the battlefield this year. Yes, Mr Speaker, can I welcome the additional support the Prime Minister has outlined today? I've had the privilege, I'm sure he has, of seeing firsthand the brilliant work our military is doing in Salisbury to train Ukrainians in defending themselves. We all support this work and the UK's role in the international drive to ensure that Ukraine has the weapons and the technology required to defend herself. Does the Prime Minister agree that continuing this international effort is the only way to ensure Putin's defeat? Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, the, the House may not uh, all be aware that actually we have continued to train Ukrainian soldiers because it's something that we have done for years before the conflict started and something that we should be very proud of. But obviously we've intensified those efforts. Last year we trained 10,000 Ukrainian soldiers through Operation Interflex. This year the Defence Secretary announced that last year we'll be training 20,000 uh, Ukrainian soldiers in addition to the Marines and Air Force pilots that I mentioned earlier. Uh, but the right honourable gentleman is right to highlight this has been an international effort. One thing that is a mark of UK leadership in this particular area is that around a dozen other countries have all come here to the Ukraine, uh, to the UK, to take part in our training programmes to support Ukrainian soldiers. Uh, many people, uh, many members from around this house will have visited uh, in their constituencies that effort. It's something that's making an incredible difference on the ground, and I know something that the President Zelensky is incredibly grateful for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I think the whole house would like to thank those involved in the incredible training that is going on. 
Mr Speaker, before I entered this House, I had responsibility for fighting for justice in The Hague for victims of Serbian aggression. Does the Prime Minister agree with me that when the war in Ukraine is over, Putin and all his cronies must stand at The Hague and face justice? Yeah. Prime Minister. Mr. Mr Speaker, the Royal Honourable Gentleman is absolutely right that we must hold those to account for the horrific crimes that they have committed. Uh, I'm proud that the United Kingdom has played, again, a leadership role in this regard, being one of the first countries to provide financial and technical support, putting investigators on the ground. We're surely to be hosting a conference together with the Dutch. Uh, and also, one of the things I discussed with President Zelensky this morning is our support for the work of the ICC, where, thanks to the efforts of UK members, I'm hopeful that we will, we will see the first indictments very shortly. Mr Speaker, across this House, we don't just hope for Ukraine's victory, we believe in it. And part of that victory must be Ukraine's reconstruction. Does the Prime Minister agree with me that Russia should pay for the destruction it has caused through the wealth lying dormant in blocked Russian government assets? Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, we are the third largest uh, humanitarian and economic donor to Ukraine, £1.4 uh, billion pounds of support that we have provided through direct grant assistance and guarantees at multilateral lending organisations. Uh, and again, the House will remember we took a lead in imposing economic sanctions on Russian entities, including individuals and state-sanctioned assets. We've ensured the provision of funds here uh, will be put in a foundation for reconstruction in Ukraine, and we are currently working with international partners through the legal process to use those assets to fund Ukrainian reconstruction. Of course, that's something that we all want to see, and we're working with our partners to achieve that. Thank you, Mr Speaker. As a country, we've always been at our best when we stand up to tyrannical aggressors threatening their neighbours and peace on our continent. That's why the Labour Party helped found NATO and why our commitment to NATO is as unshakable today as it was back then. Does the Prime Minister agree with me that whatever differences we may have, no matter what difficulties we face as a country, we in this House have a duty to stand on the shoulders of giants who came before us and support Ukraine's fight for freedom liberty and victory. Yeah. Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, we remain the leading European ally in NATO, as we always have done. Uh, we continue to increase funding in our armed forces by £24 billion at the last spending review to ensure that we make, maintain not just our NATO obligation to spend 2% of our GDP on defence, but also we participate in every NATO operation and remain the leading nation when it comes to contributions to NATO's Rapid Response Force and the NATO Readiness Initiative. Uh, but I join with the Right Honourable Gentleman in saying that this House and this country will stand united with, the U with Ukraine until we ensure the defeat of Vladimir Putin's unprovoked, unsanctioned aggression, and that we will make sure that Ukraine is not only victorious, but that we bring peace to its people. Yeah.